Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review on a review slash re slash recap and give my opinion on 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, Season 5, Episode 12. It's titled Head Games. I don't like that. I think it should be titled something like Lost in Translation or Translator Needed because that's all it was about is somebody translating stuff. Um, Jimena had to be the translator, um, for her mom and Gino. Mike, um, needed, um, Nelsie to translate for him and Jimena. Um, Hamza and Memphis, they got a translator. Ben, Ben needed a translator because he thought he was, um, Mahogany's boyfriend when he wasn't. So he needs somebody to translate that to him and tell him that he wasn't the boyfriend. And Kimberly... Kimberly thought Zara, the name Zara, was an international name for women. So she needed somebody to translate for her. So this should be um, titled, Lost in Translation or Translator Needed, Please, or something to that effect. Okay, let's get started. We have Gino and Jasmine. And oh my goodness, these two get on my nerves. I'm sick of them. I am tired of them. They have no storyline. The cycle with them is... He does something stupid. She gets mad at him. She screams. She yells. She breaks up with him. They get back together. And then the cycle starts all over again. And I'm sick of it. They have no storyline. Let's go. Okay. We pick back up to where we left off with them. Gino and Jasmine, they're on their way. They, they're way. <laughs> cannot talk. They're on their way to see Jasmine's mother. And Gino just got through telling Jasmine that he doesn't feel comfortable removing his hat. So they get to the mother's house. They go inside the house. Um, Jasmine greets her mom and her sister. She introduced Gino to them. They sit down and the mother is concerned about Jasmine and Gino's age difference. And um, one of the questions Jasmine's mom asked Jasmine was, why didn't um, Gino have any kids? And Gino said it just never happened for him. Um, Jasmine's mother asked Jasmine what she thought of the age difference. And I don't see the big deal. He's what, 52? She's 34? But Jasmine is, she has two kids. She just got divorced. She's, yeah, she's 34. She has a job. She has her own place. What's the big deal? She can handle herself. She's the one that's dating Gino, not the mother. So I don't see what the big deal is with the age difference. It's not like she's um 22, like somebody else we know. So instead of Jasmine answering the question, because the mother asked Jasmine what does she think of the age difference, instead of she answering the question, she asked Gino the question. And Gino says um, there are lots of people in relationships with huge age with a huge age gap. So the mother asks um, Jasmine again, what do you think about the age difference? And um, she said, Gino is nice and he loves me, so she doesn't care. And plus she gets to come to the States if she marries him, right? And plus Gino spends all the money on her, money he doesn't have. In his confessional, Gino said that Jasmine's mother is only a couple of years older than him. That's probably why she keeps asking about the age. So they sit down to eat and Jasmine tells her mother that Gino is not comfortable with removing his hat during the prayer. So she, she, you know, she's, she thinks it's fine. She don't think it's fine, but she, but didn't put up a fuss about it. And he kept his hat on. They said, said their prayers. And then Gino tastes the food. And then he says, it's many good. I guess the Spanish is not good. Then he asks the mother if Jasmine had lots of boyfriends growing up. And the mother tells him no. She said she was strict. She said Jasmine did not have a lot of boyfriends growing up. After dinner, they look at pictures of Jasmine when she was younger. And Jasmine was a pretty little girl. So after they look at pictures, Gino asks the mother for her blessings to propose to Jasmine. Jasmine asks if um, she want, asks Jasmine if she wanted to go to another country. And Jasmine said yes. And the mother basically said that she is worried that Jasmine will be alone. Um... 
But if Jasmine is happy, she's going to give them her blessings. And uh, our mother tells um, Gino to take care of um, Jasmine, and he said he will. And I don't know why it was necessary for him to get the mother's blessing. Jasmine has two kids by two different men, and the guy she just divorced, I don't know if he was one of the baby daddies. So, did she get the blessings for those guys? I don't see why she, this was so stupid. Why did she, he need to get Jasmine's mom's blessing? Jasmine is 34 years old. Jasmine is going to do what Jasmine want to do. So, I think this was ridiculous. And this, this is played out because they have no storyline. Uh, so they go back to the hotel, and Gino and Jasmine, they're dancing on the balcony. Then they go inside the room, and she's teaching him how to dance, and he's just hopeless at dancing. So then, you know, they go take a shower together, and later, about maybe an hour later, we see Gino, he goes off to talk to his brother, Tony. He FaceTime his, to his friend, Tony, his brother, Tony, and they, he, um, he told his brother about what happened with um, Jasmine, about he was talking to his ex wife and he sent the ex-wife pictures of Jasmine and how Jasmine got mad at him but now they're good and then he told his brother that he wants to propose to Jasmine the brother thinks it's, thinks it's too soon he said you've only been over there for two weeks um so his brother Tony's not on board with um Gino proposing but Gino said I don't know why Gino see this was a waste of time too why did Gino call his brother to tell his brother about him proposing when he said he's gonna do it anyway it was just a waste of time. The blessing was a waste of time because Jasmine's going to do what Jasmine want to do anyway. And him calling his brother to find out what his brother think about him proposing was a waste of time because Gino says, I love Jasmine and I'm going to propose to her. So why did you call your brother? For what, for what reason? Waste of time. But that's the end of Gino and Jasmine. Next is Usman and Kimberly. Another waste of our time. Okay, so we leave off where he sits her down and he tells her about Zara. He tells her that he was dating Zara, but I don't think he was dating Zara. They were only texting texting each other. He never came over to the States to see her, and she never came over to Nigeria to see him. They were just, just texting, and that was it. That's a relationship? That's no relationship to me. They never met face-to-face. -face. How is that a relationship? But anyway, he decides he wants to tell her, and I think he has to tell her because we need some type of drama. They can't be in harmony with each other. There has to be some type of drama because the producers think we want to see that. I don't want to see stupid drama. This is stupid drama because he wasn't in a relationship with Nozara. But okay, he claimed he was. But then he wasn't in a relationship with Kimberly. So what is the big deal? He just got in a relationship with, with Kimberly that day or the day before. So why is she mad? I don't get it. But yeah, she's mad. She's yelling at him. She's screaming. She's calling Zara a bitch. Never ever met Zara, but for some reason Zara is a bitch. And she's just cussing him out, and then she gets up and she walks off. They get back in the van, they drive back to the hotel, and it's just dumb. And she says, Uzma is making a fool of her. Kimberly has been making a fool of herself since the very first episode, without knowing anything about Zara. She says a bunch of stuff. She cusses him out, and she walks off. The next scene, scene we see is Uzma is outside her door. With Slam T, and they're returning the gifts that um, Kimberly gave gave to Usman. Um, Kimberly opens up the door. Apparently, she's packing to, to go back to the States. Usman is trying to give her the gift. She says she don't want the gift back because she can't fit it in her suitcase. You can fit it in your suitcase to come to Nigeria, but you can't fit it in your suitcase to go back. You bought a lot of stuff in Nigeria, did you? But anyway, who cares? So she says she don't want the gifts back because she can't fit them in her suitcase. So, um... They argue some more, and Usman is, can't believe that um, after telling her the truth, this is the way she acts. And he finally says, they argue some more, and um, um, he says she's acting like his ex-wife. He packs his bags, and he leaves out. Oh, he also said that she had texted him and said that they, and dumped him. She texted him and dumped him over text, but that was all stupid, and I'm over them too. Next is... um. Mahogany and Ben. Now, this is the story that I enjoy. was Mahogany and Ben. Okay, we see Ben at his hotel. He's swimming in his pool, in the you know hotel pool. And basically, he said that he is losing trust in Mahogany because she has been lying to him. So, Ben video chat with his friend Jason. And he tells Jason that Mahogany is real, but Jason can't believe it. But then he also tells Jason about all the lies Mahogany has been telling. Um... 
And Ben is scared to confront her with these lies. He's scared he might chase her off. So he wants her to get to know him first before he can confront her with the lies. That's so damn dumb. Anywho. Um, so Mahogany wants Ben to meet her friends. So they set up a little friendship date. I'll say um, Mahogany meets Ben somewhere. And um, then the friends show up and they all go for ice cream. And they're sitting down eating ice cream. And um, the friends said that... Um, Mahogany recently told them about Ben. And they're surprised that Mahogany is dating someone this old. Old enough to be their parent. So Ben asked the friends to tell him something about Mahogany. And the friends said that you can count on her and you can trust her. No, 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 no. You can't count on her and you can't trust her. You can't count on her to pick you up from the airport. And you can't trust her because she tells all these lies. Um... So Ben asks them what should he know about her as his boyfriend. <laughs> and the friend said that we didn't know you were her boyfriend. We thought you were just a friend from the from another country, from abroad. So Ben asked Mahogany, she, he said, am I your boyfriend or am I your friend? He already feels like it's falling off. It feels crooked too. Is it crooked? Okay, anyway. So um, Ben asked Mahogany, am I your boyfriend or am I your friend? <laughs> Mahogany told him, you're my friend. <laughs> she said, you never asked me to be your girlfriend. That Mahogany, she is a pro. I'm liking her. The more she talks, the more I like her. <laughs> She's a pro. She. This is what she does. She talks to these guys online. She gets them to fall in love with her. She said anything to them to get them to fall in love with her. And then she gets money out of them. And that's exactly what she did to Ben. Ben sent her $1,000. Alone for a thousand dollars, she sweet talk him. So, okay, I love you. We can get married, have kids. Send me a thousand dollars, and that's what he did. But she didn't plan on him coming to her country looking for her. She didn't think he was gonna be stupid enough to do that, but he was. He's 52 years old, he doesn't know any better. He thinks you're when you say I love you, you mean it. <laughs> um, let me see what else happened. She said in her confessional that Ben mentioned marriage while they were chatting online. She said, but how was she to know that he was serious? <laughs> he was serious when he sent you that thousand dollars, wasn't he? <laughs> in his confessional, Ben said they plan a family together. They plan on getting married. Uh, they had intimate conversations and he traveled 4,000 miles to be with her. And he said, and all of a sudden now he's not her boyfriend. <laughs> ben said he is shocked and confused. <laughs> Need to go blow my nose. <laughs> I laughed and I thought I was going to. Anyway. Ah. That is what you get, Ben, when you dump your wife. How many years were they married? They were married for quite a few years. 20, 10 years, something like that. This is what you get, Ben, when you dump your wife. And you decide to date 22 year, years, year old women across the world over the internet. This is what happens. They need to, <laughs> they need to ban him from being on the internet. Um, what else? Where were we? So the next day, Ben goes through his text messages with Mahogany to prove that they were talking about love, marriage, and kids. And poor Ben, he's lost. He doesn't know what changed to, um, you know, to to make her decide that they're not boyfriend and girlfriends. So um, they plan to go away on a trip. And I guess he just wants her to fall all, head over heels in love with him. He thinks go, them going away on a trip will make her fall in love with him. So they drive like three hours to this, this place. And um, when they get to the hotel... Mahogany makes sure she asks the person at the front desk, we have two rooms reserved, right? <laughs> She's not sharing no room with him. Um, so they go to their each separate rooms, and the next morning they meet up, and they do a dune buggy ride, and that looks like fun. Then they stop in the desert in the desert to have dinner, and Ben is getting touchy-feely with her. Oh, He's touching her lower back. He's not touching her up here or even on her arms or hands. He's touching, rubbing her lower back. 
Oh. Anyway, they then served, and then Mahogany asked him what was he like at like at her age. I don't know why she's asking him that he's not her age. Ask him what is he like now at fifty two. Um, he tells her at his at her age he was just coming out of college and he wanted a wife and kids and to become a pastor. He said his marriage didn't work basically basically because they didn't get along. That's what he said. And he also said that the religion has something to do with it. Um, Mahogany asked him about his relationship with his ex-wife. And he told her if they had a, a good relationship. He said, no, they didn't have a good relationship. Um, ben told her that when he found out that they were just friends, he was hurt. When him and her were just friends, he was hurt. She told him he never said, let's be a couple. He doesn't deny it, so she's probably right. She said, how did you, um, she said, yeah, she said, how did you skip that step? <laughs> Mahogany is something else. I am liking her. Ben said, we discussed having a family. He said, I said I was in love with you. And the next step is we get engaged. She said, that was just texting. <laughs> She said he assumed that they were in a relationship because they were texting. And then she asked him if he ever dated um, anyone in their 20s. And Ben said after his divorce, he, he dated someone who was 27 years old. But they broke up because she um, wouldn't accept his kids. But that mahogany, she's a force to be reckoned with. This is what she tells him. Basically, she says to him, she says, you blame the failure of your marriage on your wife and the religion. You blame the failure of your last relationship on the person that you were in the relationship with. She said, how come you're so perfect? I was like, oh my God. I love this mahogany. She is something else. Ben didn't know what to say. He said, um... He tells her that he's not. he doesn't want to talk about his past anymore. He doesn't want to talk about that anymore. And in her confessional, she said, a pastor not taking responsibility for his mistakes is very immature. She is 22 years old, and she's telling this 52-year-old that he's immature. <laughs> they need to just go to hell home. Mahogany will chew him up and spit him out. He just does not play the game. He doesn't know how to play the game. Poor thing, he don't even know he's playing the game. <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of them. Next is um, Jimena and Mike. Oh, I heard something horrible about Mike. I heard Mike was a racist or is a racist. Mike, you're a racist? I'm not even mad at it. I just feel sorry for that bloke. I feel sorry for him because he's just an ignorant little ugly racist running around, paying people's bills, <laughs> paying for boob jobs, and trying to get somebody to love him. Okay, Mike, let's go. Um, we left off last week when Jimena tells him that she loves him, but she's not in love with him, is what she said. Well, before she told him she she didn't love him. To this this episode, she says she cleaned it up because she still wants her boob job, so she has to clean it up a little bit. So she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And um, the reason she says she's not in love with him is because... Um, they haven't lived together. And then Mike told her that she's changed. Because last time he was over there, she was all in love with him, crying when he left, hugging, kissing and everything. She, she, she said she changed because she has doubts. And Mike asked her, what are these doubts? And she said, you know what, I'm sleepy. I want to go to bed, I want to put my, my boys to bed. I'll talk about this with you another time. So Mike goes into the other room and he's all alone, all by himself. Poor, lonely, little racist Mike. Okay, so um, Jimena says in her confessional, um, she basically said that she was in love with Mike, but she don't know what happened. She said she's uncomfortable with him and she appreciates him, but she doesn't want to hurt him. She, yeah, she, appre she appreciates him and she doesn't want to hurt him. Oh, my um, window is open and the blinds are hitting the window. 
uh, where was I? She appreciates him and she wants to be honest with him. So Mike is in the other room all by himself looking pitiful. Racist little Mike looking pitiful. And the producers ask him if he's okay. And he says, not really. And he tells the producer that she has doubts and he wants to know what these doubts are. And he says, she's not perfect either. And then Mike says he does not want to be there. He should go to a hotel then. Don't stay there. If you don't want to be there, don't go. Don't stay there. Go to a hotel. The next morning, Mike calls his friend John. And Mike tells John everything that's going on with Jimena. And John said he would be out of there. And so would I. I would leave. You don't love me anymore? I'm out. Bye. I pat my crap and I'd be gone. So Mike asks John if his wife can translate for him because this is the couple that went with him when he was in New York to go to the store to buy toys for um, him and his kids. And the wife is Hispanic, I guess. Um, he wants to make sure that he understands Humana when she says she don't love him anymore because now he wants a translator. He wants um, John's wife to translate for them. So... The next scene, we see Mike and Humana, they're on their way to a restaurant. They go to a restaurant um, to FaceTime with John's wife. Her name is Nelsie. Humana, Humana doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to tell her business to Mike's friends, but she was telling her business to her um, relatives, right? She was talking crap about Mike to, to her um, relatives, right? Racist Mike. Um, so she's a hypocrite there. Even though he's a racist, she's a hypocrite. Which which was which is worse, being a hypocrite or being a racist? I think racist wins hands down, right? Yeah. Okay. She tell she talks to her family about yeah she talks to her family about Mike all the time, but she does not want Mike talking to his friends and family about her. She said Mike insisted that they talk to Nelsie, so she has no choice. So Mike calls Nelsie, and he's talking to Nelsie. But Humana doesn't want to say hi to Nelsie. For what reason? I don't know. That's so rude. Anyway, um, Humana starts talking to Nelsie. And she tells Nelsie the same thing she said about she said to Mike. That she loves him, but she's not in love with him. You know, he's always staring at her. And Nelsie says to Humana that you were in love with him before. Now, what changed? And Humana tells Nelsie that she doesn't like the way Mike acts. And she, yeah, she tells Nelsie how Mike stares at her, you know, when she's asleep. So Mike tells, um, so Nelsie tells Mike that Amanda says you stare at her when she's asleep. And Mike says, well, tell her that the only reason I'm staring at her is because I think she's beautiful. Same crap. So he said this last, last episode. So, um, Nelsie tells Amanda, he says, you're beautiful. That's why he's staring at you. So, um, Nelsie, Nelsie asks Jimena, what does she like about Mike? But she doesn't say what she likes about him because, of course, she likes nothing about him. And he's racist anyway, so I don't care. <laughs> so, um, she tells Nelsie what she doesn't like about Mike. She says Mike, Mike is always burping. Mike is a slob. She said Mike is slobbish and piggish and racist. She didn't put racist, but, yeah, we'll just add, tack that onto it. So he's burping all the time, he's a, he's slobbish, he's piggish, and he's racist. <laughs> Nelsie told Mike, I asked her what she likes about you, but instead of saying what she likes about you, she said the things she doesn't like about you. Nelsie, Nelsie tells this to Mike. Nelsie told Mike that she don't think Jimena likes him being near her. And Nelsie asks Jimena if it's if it bothers her to take money from Mike and now she doesn't want anything to do with him. And Jimena said, well, I used to work. She said she used to work and then she stopped working when Mike started supporting her. So Nelsie asks Mike, she said, is that true? You know, she stopped working and then you started supporting her. And Mike said, yes, that's true. So, Nelsie tells Mike to stop paying her bills, stop paying for her way, stop supporting her. Because she's literally, literally disgusted by him. And she's not happy with you and she has no love for you. So, Mike tells Nelsie that he'll check 
you know, check on flights the next day. So, um, he gets off the phone with Nelsie, and then Mike tells Jimena that he w um, is going to give her her space, and if she wants... He's going to give her the, the space that she wants and he hopes that they can talk and be friends. So then Jimena asked him if he's ending things with her and then it went off. Last but not least, we have Hamza and Memphis. Hamza is on the balcony at his mother's house or mother's apartment. Memphis goes out there and she asks him if he's okay. And he says he feels bad and he, um, he told her that... She, um, she liked problems, but I think he probably meant she has problems. She has a lot of problems. Um, Memphis decided that they need a translator because they need she needs to talk to him. And um, the translator app is just not doing a good job enough for them. So next thing we see there, um, they, um, Emza is actually worried that Memphis is, is ha has feelings for her ex-husband. So, um... They go um, get this translator, and they, they're um, talking to this translator. And Hamza tells the translator that he's worried that if they argue, Memphis will go to her ex-husband's house for four days. Um, and Memphis told him, no, um, she won't do that. Hamza does not like the fact that she still talks with her ex-husband. Um, Memphis tells him that she has to talk to her ex-husband because she has kids with him. She has one kid with him, but she said she has kids with him. And the trans and then she starts yelling. when She's yelling when she's saying it, and the translator is trying to tell her, no, no, stop yelling. And then even Hamza's like, Hamza says, she yells at me all the time. And then in her confessional, she says she has to try to stop yelling all the time. So Memphis tells him that she is going against everyone in her family to marry him, to come over here and marry him. And then she starts to cry. And then Hamza feels sorry for her and he kisses her. Whenever she gets into hot water with Hamza, she's, all she has to do is just cry. And he just doesn't like to see her cry. Whenever she cries, he comes over to her, kisses her, and, you know, tells her, tells her it's okay, it's okay. All right. Next scene. Um. Hamza is feeling better about talk after talking to uh, Memphis through the translator. He's feeling better, so he takes Memphis on a ride to this old city. Um, he goes somewhere, changes clothes. He comes out in all white, and he looks really, really good. He um, um, tells her that he's happy. He gets down on one knee and he presents her with a ring and asks her to marry him. She says yes, and it was really, really nice. And that was it. And that is the end of my review. I will be back next week with another review. Thank you so much for watching. Princess on a Pillow here.